Before we start talking about the project, could you tell us more about your company? So let me first start off with the company that is the holding group of Bloomberg Grain, which is Bloomberg Capital Partners. Bloomberg Capital Partners is a company that was started by my father in 1979 after he graduated from Harvard Business School. He actually went down back to Miami, Florida, where I was born and the company is headquartered. Um, but he started and got into general contracting. You know, many of his uh, co cohorts and colleagues uh, out of Harvard Business School got into the financial services business, but my father decided to get his hands dirty back in Florida, back in South Florida specifically where we're from, and developing houses, many of the communities that you see in South Florida now. The company um, very quickly though escalated in terms of its breadth of activities and started getting into real estate investment. Real estate investment primarily along the Class A commercial office space. Um, my father at the age of 35, 36 was probably the, large, the youngest fund manager in the industry. Um, investing funds on behalf of institutions, foundations, pensions, and then some high net worth individuals. The company was investing primarily in the office space market and did very well. Did very well all through the 70s, 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. The company had about an 18% average annual return to our investors, never a losing year. And that was due to some of the conservative investment strategies that the company had. Um, for example, we would never buy buildings above replacement costs. So we tracked what the value of the actual construction elements were for that building. At the end of the day, what is a building really than a floating barge of commodities? Glass, copper, nickel, steel, etc. So we had a desk that tracked those activities in the commodities markets. Um, and that was one of our conservative investment philosophies. Another thing we did is we never over levered. We didn't take out large bank loans in order to buy properties. Unlike some of our competitors who were buying properties, for example, with 90% leverage. And you saw that happening in the real estate industry all during the 2000s. And into 2006 was really the peak of the borrowing incident. Um, fortunately, our company and my father specifically saw a cliff on the horizon of the real estate industry. And in 2006, towards the end of 2006, he made some statements in the Wall Street Journal and other publications saying that we were going to start divesting some of these assets. Um, the company started selling off many of the properties that we owned all across the United States and returning money back to our investors. Um, our investors were very happy because they were realizing very high returns, but they were incredibly happy when in 2008 the market crashed and they had received all of their money back okay. plus 21%. So it was a very, very strong move by the company and put us into a position where we were able to start diversifying in 2008 when others were running away and trying to figure out how to re-strategize. We were in a position to start diversifying into other industries. Because of our expertise in the commodity sector vis-a-vis -vis the tracking of the materials and elements that go into real estate construction, we had a desk that knew that area very well. We brought on one of the heads of uh, the commodities desk at Citibank to actually launch a commodities-based institutional investment fund. That fund would invest in brick-and-mortar commodities-based projects. And I tell you this because I'm trying to get to the evolution of Bloomberg Grain. You may say, what is a company that is well-known in the real estate industry doing in food safety and security? Exactly. But it actually happened during a trip to India, which occurred in 2010. The company was there for the commodities fund looking at a solar field investment in India. And the solar field, really just by coincidence, was paired to a grain storage facility. In India they call them go-downs. And these grain storage facilities were packed to the brim with wheat. And there were piles of wheat on the outside. And it seemed like they were just really in high demand at that point in time. The harvest was coming in, farmers were having a very strong season. Um, but they didn't have anywhere to put it, so the facilities were, over, were at overcapacity. And unfortunately, it was during the monsoon season, rain came over the evening and washed all of the wheat into the streets. Um, rodents, cows, etc., were eating at it. It was rotting in the streets. In the meantime, the necessity to transport wheat all across the country was incredibly high. And people were complaining about the price of the product, while at the same time you're having exorbitant amounts of waste. This was the first time our company came face to face with this issue of post-harvest losses. 